Hello YouTube, Sentinel H back again for episode 3 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. So, we're right here where we left off last time. We've got our two steam engines set up, and in this episode, I'm going to go through how to tr basics, the very basics of how to transfer shaft power, and we're going to get this furnace powered by our steam engines. So to do that, we're going to need some parts. You can see them in my hotbar down there. I'm going to show you how to make these uh, useful tools that you're going to want to make, uh, as well as the parts we're going to need. So there are two incredibly useful tools. One of them you're going to need, and one of them that's really useful. Um, the one you're going to need is the screwdriver. Um, and it's really simple to craft. You craft it like this, with an oak wood plank, a stick, and an iron ingot. And that gives you the screwdriver. And very simply, the screwdriver is the wrench of Rotary Craft. Um, Buildcraft has a wrench, ther Thermal Expansion has the Crescent Hammer, and Rotary Craft has the screwdriver. It's used to rotate machines and shafts and change certain uh, devices into different modes. You're going to need it, um, and which is why it's great that it's really cheap and it doesn't decay over time. There's no durability. Um, the second useful tool you're probably going to want is the angular transducer. Um, now it is slightly expensive for only one reason, and that does use an ender pearl. Um, so you're going to have to go kill some endermen and get an ender pearl. But you know, once you do that, uh, you're golden because all, all it takes is five uh, wood planks and a stick. Um, and what the angular transducer does, if I quick go in and show it, is that if you um, if you right click with it on, uh, it took my angular transducer away. Um, just a second. I, I've got this issue with my mouse that it sometimes uh, double right clicks whenever I right. Where is the angular transducer? I don't know where it is. My mouse sometimes double clicks when I right click, and that's why it's activating block pick and and doing that. I, I wonder if I can turn that off. But anyway, if you right click on a on any sort of shaft thing or a steam engine, uh, you can. The angular transducer will show you um, how much power it's outputting at what speed, uh, and give you other information. Like if, like for this uh, steam engine, it's telling me that it has enough water in it to run for an hour and a half. If I right-click this electric engine, it's telling me how much power it's outputting. And if I had this connected to a shaft or to a machine, it would tell me how much power it's getting. And maybe most importantly, it'll tell you which engines it's getting that power from. So the angular transducer is really, 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 really useful for uh, troubleshooting your um, shaft setups, because they can get pretty complex um, if you don't manage them. Um, so what I want to do in, the, in this uh, video is I want to power this furnace using these two steam engines, but I like the furnace where it is, and I don't want to move it, and I don't want to move my steam engines. Um, obviously, the simplest way of powering anything in Rotary Craft is just to stick the machine you want to power right next to the engine. Um, but that's that's going to get old real quick. Uh, so, so we want to um, transfer our power, and we're, we're going to need a couple of machines for that. Um, well, not much really machines. Uh, what we're going to need is some shaft units. Uh, we're going to need to be able to turn corners, so we need bevel gears. And then I'm going to show you the uh, shaft junction. Uh, you're going to get, if you if you do anything in Rotorcraft, you're going to get really uh, comfortable with these guys. You're going to see a lot of them. You're going to use them a lot. Um, so we want to make stone shafts, um, which are used to transfer power in a straight line. And I like to use stone shafts uh, because if we open up the Rotorcraft handbook and we go to the shaft page, you see that we've got five different types of materials we can make shafts out of. Wood, stone, steel, diamond, and bedrock. Yeah, you can mine bedrock in Rotary Craft. Um, and they all have load limits. So, you know, if you exceed 278 newton meters of torque, or, not and, or it says at, 3577 rads, if you exceed this uh, amount of power on a wooden shaft, it'll break. Um, and, and you, you can't put that much power through wood. Um, stone has its limit, steel has its limit, diamond has a really high limit, but only bedrock is unbreakable. Um, now the thing is, I've never found a reason to use wooden shafts. Me personally, um, whenever I'm looking to make shafts, even like right at the beginning of Rotary Craft, I've never been in a situation where I have more wood than stone, um, or my stone is Le more valuable than my wood. I mean, stone is an infinite resource, essentially. So uh, I've always just used stone as the basic, but you can use whatever you want. You can use wood shafts if you like to. The, the process is the same, but I'm going to show it uh, using stone. So to make a stone shaft, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need stone rods. Um, 
which are like shaft units made out of steel, but they're made out of stone. So in a crafting station, it's three stone, and note that this is smooth stone, not cobblestone. So you're going to have to cook this um, to get the smooth stone, or use silk touch, I guess, uh, to get your stone rods. And you only get two of them for three, rather than getting three for three with the steel, but it doesn't matter because stone's infinite. So once you've got some stone rods, you can make stone shafts, which have to be made in the, in the work table. And it's a stone rod and stone slabs. Everyone knows how to make stone slabs. Um, I wasn't going to show you that. And you get eight of them. So for this one recipe, you get a whole lot of these. So you can really mass produce these things. And, and making a stack of them is not hard at all. And you have a bunch of stone shafts on, on hand. So what we're going to use these stone shafts for is, is we're going to use them to um, move our power dur uh, over these little straightaways. So um, now we've got our stone shafts in place and making sure that we have them um, turn the right way. So green is the side that the power comes in at and red is the side that the power outputs. So make sure you've got these turned the right way because they won't work if they're turned uh, the other way. Okay, so um, now we need to take the power from this steam engine and turn it uh, so that it connects to this shaft. And the way we do that is with a bevel gear. And uh, bevel gears are crafted... Let me get this out of my hand. Bevel gears are crafted like this, in a work table. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five base panels, st uh, steel gear, two shaft units, and a steel ingot. Gets you four bevel gears. So, you know, it's, again, lots of steel, but you do get four bevel gears, um, which is nice. So, you'll notice that it's much easier to go straight with shafts, so you want to try and minimize uh, turns whenever possible. But still, this is how you craft bevel gears. So now let's take our bevel gear, and we're going to put it here. Now, when you place it down, you'll see a lot of colored uh, things sticking out. And if I use my uh, transducer, you'll see that each side has a colored overlay that shows up, um, as well as it has the red box and the green box. And the reason for this is that if you right click on the bevel gear with an empty hand, you'll get this inf interface where you can set the input and output side, and that corresponds to the colors. So what I want to do is I want the yellow side, which is this side, I know it kind of looks uh, orange, but that's just because there's a, a red bounding box here. I want the yellow side to be my input, and I want the purple side to be my output. So if I click on this, I can say yellow side input, and some of these will go gray because you cannot input on the yellow side and output to those sides. Um, then we click on the purple side and now you'll notice that the model changes and it shows that the gears are connected to the side that they're supposed to be connected to and now they're turning. And um, this is one thing I love about Rotorcraft is all the animations so you can always tell if these shafts are getting power because the gears are turning. <laughs> um, so that's great, we've got power from our uh, one steam engine and it's going this way. Um, but now, before I get to what I want to talk to next, um, let's make the machine that's actually going to power this uh, furnace, because um, I bet you're dying to know what it is. And that's the friction heater. And the friction heater is a really simple machine. You make it from the stuff that we learned how to make last episode. And all you do is you place it next to a furnace, or I guess other machines that need uh, heat. I'm not, I've never tried using it to power a blast furnace because it's not necessary. Um, but next to a standard Minecraft furnace, it definitely works. Um, and it will heat it up, and it'll allow the furnace to run without fuel. Um, and this is how you craft it. It's so simple. Three steel ingots, two base panels, and two shaft units. And that gets you the friction heater. And I use, I use these. They're great. Um, obviously, since our steam power is infinite, Powering furnaces for free means you don't have to use coal or charcoal or wood to uh, smelt things, which is awesome. It's apparently infinite smelting. So if I place my friction heater, I'm just going to place it like that so I don't have to turn it. Um, but you notice it has the green side here, and that's where it gets its power from. And then all that matters is that this side is touching uh, the furnace. And you'll notice that when I right-click on the uh, friction heater with the angular transducer, it tells me that I have insufficient power, it requires 8192 watts, and I have insufficient torque. The heater requires 32 newton meters. And that's one of the other great things about the angular transducer, is that if you're wondering why a machine isn't working, hit it with the angular transducer, and it'll tell you what power requirements you're not currently meeting, which is another great use uh, for the angular transducer. So um, 
now that we've got that, let's m let me briefly pop a uh, bevel gear here and set it up like this, and we can see it working. So you see, it also has a sound effect. It sounds like it's grinding on stone, and it's heating up. And as that heats up, you'll notice that this is now glowing red. And if we pop some oak wood in there, the in the first one always smells instantly. I don't know why. I think it, it charges up uh, power and smells instantly. Uh, you'll see it cooking at a pretty darn decent rate um, for a, a standard furnace. But we can make that we can make this better. Um, you'll notice that this is heating. It's heated to like 565 uh, C right now. But we can make this better. Um, by using the power from both of these steam engines, which you probably knew is where we were going with this, um, will make this run faster. Although, as you can see, it's not necessary. You can happily run a friction heater uh, powering a furnace off of one steam engine. Um, but since we got two, let's use them both. And what we need for that is a shaft junction. And the shaft junction is crafted like so. Again, it's crafted with the same things we learned how to make last episode. Three base panels, three shaft units, a uh, gear, and two steel ingots will get you two shaft junctions. So you don't get nearly as many, you only get half as many of these as you do with the bevel gear recipe. Um, but they're really nice, they're really good, uh, and, and you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna use a lot of these. Um, so we place this down, and what it does is it's got two modes. Uh, the mode that it's in right now, it has two green boxes and one red box, in that it'll take power from both of those directions, and output it uh, to the red side. Um, you cannot accept power from two opposite sides and output it at a T-junction. That doesn't work. It has to be like that, kitty corner. You'll, you can see the gears in here, um, and you can see them turning. You can see that these two ones, these two are black, they're input gears, and this one is white. Now, if we take a screwdriver and we shift right click on it, now it says error, obviously, because it's not working properly, but that sets it into splitting mode, and then it'll try and take one input and split it into two outputs. And when you do that, there are some options you can set. We'll talk about this later, but this junction is very powerful. Um, we don't concern yourselves too much with that at the moment, because we're just worrying about the... Um, we just want to merge power right now. So use the screwdriver to rotate it. You may have to rotate it several times, but now we got it. And our friction heater is heating up. It's not heating up as quickly as when I was uh, doing this earlier, um, but you'll see it's already heated up more than it did before. So that's going to heat, and it's going to stop around um, 670 something. Let's just watch it. 670, 671, 672, 673, 673. So you'll notice that it didn't double the effectiveness. It doesn't work that way. Um, the amount of power that it's getting from these two steam engines is not enough to completely double the efficiency. Um, but it is working and it will smelt faster. You can see it tells us that it's getting power from the tiles entity steam engines and it gives us the coordinates and it tells us how much power it's receiving. It's currently receiving 32 kilowatts at 512 rads. It's just uh, radians per second. It's just those two, you know, multiplied by two. Uh, and if we go into our furnace and we pop oak wood in it, you'll see that it actually it is smelting faster. And it's as simple as that. The more power you pump into a friction heater, the faster it runs um, the furnace. I've seen uh, Rika, I hope I pronounced that right, Rika, I don't know how to pronounce the mod maker's name, which is probably a bad thing. Um, he had a video on his channel showing off uh, his base and he had furnaces that were smelting these things so fast it was taking less than a second uh, per operation because of the amount of power he was uh, pumping into these friction heaters um, to heat up the furnaces. I think he was using friction heaters. Um, but there we go. You, you can now smell anything, I mean, like I'm showing you here, it's a great way to smell charcoal because um, you're not using any, any uh, fuel to create fuel. Um, and, you know, anything that you want to smelt. Uh, and you only need, you know, one steam engine to power it, so you could use and have two furnaces here. And like, you, like uh, you've noticed, because these two steam engines together don't double the effectiveness of this friction heater, if you're going for a smelting efficiency, then you're better off using two friction heaters and two furnaces in this setup than doing it this way. But I just wanted to show you the, uh, you know, shaft junction in action. But uh, there are a lot of quirks that you want to um, work with and uh, figure out. But that's the friction heater. That's how to power a furnace with Rotary Craft steam engines. 
And that's it for this episode. So uh, join me. I hope you join me next episode. I hope you've learned a something from this video. I hope I didn't talk too fast. You, um, you can obviously go and rewatch it, but um, I hope you are enjoying the series of tutorials. Uh, the next tutorial is going to be we're going to talk about um, what should we talk about next episode? Um, I know. Well, I'll talk about a couple of utilities that you might want to set up uh, using Rotorcraft. Um, I think the next one we'll go into is um, the windmills, and we'll also talk about automatic farming, or at least automatic harvesting, of crops using Rotorcraft. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I'm Sentinel H, and I'll see you. <laughs> I'm signing out.